Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, this prayer is always in order. Amen. And Lord God, right now, I need you to come and speak to your people. Yes, Lord. Father, move me so far out of the way, Lord God, that they won't see this six foot three frame, Lord God. Hide this 300 pound man behind the cross and uh, cover me up with your blood, Lord God, and you speak. Because if you show up, we know uh, hearts will be fixed, minds will be regulated, and, and, and we will have that which what we need. So, so uh, empower me right now, Lord God, to speak the truth without error. Speak truth to power, Lord God, and, and, and let the enemy know, let the devil know that he is defeated. Because he is a defeated foe. Amen. So, Father God, we just thank you, and we praise you. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. And I want you to uh, purchase uh, C.C. Wine's new new work. She's got a new work that's just come out. And, and that song right there, the, I think the title track is I Be I'm Believing God. And, uh, that song is on that, is on that EP. We used to call them LPs, but I think they call them EPs now. Uh, you can download it, Spotify, uh, Pandora, iTunes, wherever you get your music from. Amen, somebody. Before I start preaching, I, I just want to say this. I believe in God. Uh, I had, God had dropped a figure in my, in my heart for five million dollars. And what is that for? Not for me. That's for the building over here. And see, when you put stuff out in the atmosphere, when you throw it out there with, with not fear of contradiction, when you throw it out there, and if somebody will believe me for God, Amen. we can see that building be renovated. Amen. We can put computers. I, I, I told you when I first came here, I had a vision about that building over there. It's a historical building and that would be used for the community. Amen. Place with Wi-Fi, place for children to come, place for tourists to come. And that's going to employ Come on, somebody. Somebody that don't have a job Amen. is going to see to that. Amen. I'm just foolish enough to believe God for it. Because if God was able to step out on nothing and speak a world into existence, God can do that. Amen. And I want to let Brother Harold know. Brother Harold, I want you, if you know any musicians that can play like you play. They can play with you. I, I want you to put that out there and put some feelings out. Somebody said there was a pianist in this community that I don't think had a church home. I don't know. Maybe y'all know. Amen. But, but if you know some musicians and, and, and listen, before y'all get it twisted and take it back past and look at your musicians, Brother Gerald is always going to be a number here. Thank you. Thank you. I, listen. He's welcome here. Yeah. You know, he does what he does. He makes his own decisions. He's a grown man. Amen. But he's always welcome here because Pop Lawson was one of the architects. Yeah. He stood. I stand on Pop Lawson's shoulders. Amen. That being said, there is a word from God. Amen. If you would, turn to 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter. And we're going to focus on verse 51. That's 1 Samuel, verse chapter 17, verse 51. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. I'll give you time to get there. I'll give you time to get there. 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, things 1 Kings, 2 Kings. And if you got a concordance, you can find it real quick. And you can have it if you don't mind. Stand for the reading of the word of God. Amen. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. 1 Samuel 17, 51. It says, Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it, the Philistine sword, and out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw the champion was dead, they fled. You may be seated in the presence of God. 
And for our subject and the title of this lesson this morning, simply conquering your giants. Mm -hmm. Conquering your giants. I feel like I'm going to miss a good one. <laughs> See, I'm not one to stay. God bless you, I love you all very much. All right, you have a blessed day. You, you have a blessed day, God. All right. Conquering your giants. What do I mean? This is a, this is a familiar passage of, of scripture. This is a uh, incident. It's not a story because this happened. This is an incident that happened in the life of David. And when I say conquering your giants, what I'm, what I'm really talking about is those inner personal giants that we all deal with. The story here is speaking of a young lad named David who was who took it upon himself to fight a nine-foot giant named Goliath. Mm -hmm. Look, when, when all his brothers, now he was the son of Jesse, he was the eighth child of Jesse, the eighth son of Jesse, and he was the youngest child of Jesse. And this is before David became king. He was a little rut of a lad. Mm -hmm. he, was a, uh, he was the least, you know how they said in high school, the least likely to succeed, that was David. David was a shepherd boy who tended the flocks of Saul and, 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 and he, his father was Jesse. And in this particular instance, his dad they, uh, had heard about the battle between the Philistines and, and Judah and Israel. They had arrayed themselves and Saul was the king. I'm just giving you a little black background right quick. Now, Saul being the king, and they seen this nine foot giant come out, and they were afraid. Jesse said, son, go down to the battle encampment and take some, some lunch. Because your brother, he had three elder brothers that were, that were fighting in the battle. And how does this relate to us? How is this something that relates to us? I don't know what your giant may be. But we all have personal giants in our life. Uh, I.e., what do I mean by giant? It could be the spirit of procrastination. Uh, it could be uh, something that was said to you years ago. Somebody told you you never would make it or you would never amount to anything. And you allowed that giant to grow in your life. You allowed that thing to uh, become a situation that now it's like the elephant in the room. Whether it's your uh, anger, or whether, whatever it may be that is not of God. Come on, somebody. Man. I'm asking you to think about your giant. And a lot of times what we make the mistake is we are waiting on God to slew, to slew our giants. And God is not going to do that. He'll, he'll let that giant live with you because he gave you the power. If you knew the power that you had, if you knew who you, whose you were, if you knew whose child you were, you would have slew that giant a long time ago. Could be the, the giant of alcohol. It could be the giant of drug abuse. It could be the giant of fornication. It could be the giant of whatever that giant may be. But it's a giant that you're going to have to kill. God has empowered us He's equipped us to do that which we don't think we're capable of doing. Amen. Amen. Here was a, a, a little young man who had not reached the age of puberty. A young lad who had came out. And all these mighty men. Here is Saul, this, this great king. And, and all these men that were much bigger than David. Are sitting back letting this Philistine talk about their God. David walks up and says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that's, that's running his mouth like that? You know, sometimes we can be complicit. Complicit means that if I see wrong and I don't speak up against wrong, I'm just as bad as the person that's doing wrong. Come on, somebody. Complicit means that uh, I just get, a, I go along to get along. I ain't gonna say nothing because I'm either Fear is another one of those giants. Amen. Fear, the fear of being ridiculed by the community. Amen. Three of our biggest problems, yes. three areas in our life 
There are giants that we wrestle with. One is the flesh. Come on, somebody. This body that I live in, these, not, the, not so much the skin, but it's that fleshly nature. That thing, that, that, that nature that's not godly. The other thing is the world. The world's opinion of, of who we are. What somebody has said about us. Come on, somebody. Amen. You know, uh, as African American people who have matriculated from our ancestors came from Africa, yeah. we've had to endure ridicule. Amen. Come on, somebody. We have, and then we even in our own race, we got the color, you know, that, that paper bag chest. Yeah. <laughs> you know how we do, you know, if you ain't, if you if you a couple of shades darker than me. You, you, you think that you can get, you can carry some fame, you know, because you're a little bit light skinned. We even, we even ridicule ourselves. We can't even trust each other. You know, there's there's different nationalities that they can go out and come together. The Chinese can come and they can they can put their money together and they can they, they, they can build whatever. I look at the Arab, Arabs that come over to this country and they own all the filling stations. In our more in other places. They're not afraid to come in your community and take your money. But when it comes to us, we can't open nothing. And if we do open it, we ain't gonna support each other. Y'all right, ain't saying that to me, but I know I'm right about it. Open up a business in this in this community, and, and because you open it up, somebody gonna look at you. She thinks she whatever. But this is Women's Month and, and uh, Women's History Month, and I want to celebrate all the women. Come on, man, I ain't, I ain't leaving y'all out, but this is March, and this is historically, we, we've got Mentor Warner. We've got uh, Mezola McCurson. I, I, I can run down a list of names of black women who, who did, uh, look, against all odds, against all odds. When the odds was against them, when you were least likely to succeed, right. Mr. Vaughn and, and McCurson, Mazola McCurson, they went above and beyond. Yeah, yeah. And their names is written in the Chronicles of History. Amen. And there's no reason why somebody sitting in these pews, your name can't be written in the Chronicles of History. Amen. But you gotta salute, you gotta slay your giants. You gotta slay that mentality. Because a lot of times the, the, the battlefield is in the mind. This is where all of our problems stem. This is where the warfare takes place. In your head. You know, when you, you, you've been told so many times, you know, you can't even tell people your dreams. You got a dream God placed on your heart and you've been wanting to, to do this thing. As soon as you tell somebody, they look at you and say, girl, you know, you can't do that. That ain't gonna work. Uh, how many times have you heard that? Oh, uh, you know, you, you, that, look, look, look. That's a pyramid scheme. You can't get involved with that. Come on, somebody. Uh, I'm just talking about the giants in our lives. And if we don't sl slay them, if we don't slay them, they will hinder us. They will keep us from being all that God wants us to be Amen. in the body of Christ. Amen. I hope I'm helping. Am I preaching to anybody in here? Yes. Is, am I saying anything that might be helping somebody? Yes. Because God, as he said, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Yes. No weapon. He said you are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Yes. I read where he said, I think it's in, in Philippians, he said, I can do all things. Through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Yeah, Good God Almighty. So we ought to be a little bit further along Amen. on our walk with Jesus. Yeah, Good God Almighty. Amen. Amen. David remembered what God had did for him. Uh -huh. David, when confronted with this Philistine, he, he was having a conversation with Saul. And Saul, he told Saul, he said, listen, King, I remember when a sheep bear and a lion came up to attack the sheep. And God empowered me to kill the sheep bear and the lion. Sometimes we need to remember 
the victories that God has brought us through. Amen. Remember how when you had the sickness in your body that was set up to kill you, but God healed you. Can I say it again? That sickness that was set up to kill you, it healed you. Remember how when, when your light bill was due and your rent bill too, and you didn't know where the money was going to come from. And all of a sudden, miraculously, the money showed up. Sometimes you got to remind yourself when you face with your giants what God has already brought you through. David wasn't trying to do this thing by himself, but he gave God the glory. He, he reminded Saul, this is what God had done for me before. And this is what God could do for me now. I'm, just, I'm not just preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself. This, this message is hitting me all inside my head because I, I you know, and I, listen, I stopped saying I should be, a, I, sh I stopped telling myself I should be a little bit further along than I am. I stopped telling myself that because I am where God wants me to be. Amen. Through all the trials and tribulations, but I do recognize that it was, some of that was the giant of procrastination. The giant of putting things off. The giant of not dealing with the finances like we should. Amen. But I thank God he's a God of the first and second and third chance. Yeah. Right. God, he cast my sins in the sea of forgetfulness and he never, where they never can be brought up again. Amen. But what we do, after we cast, he cast our sins, we rehearse them. We keep on playing that tape back. We keep on playing that tape back and not realizing God has already set you free. So why are you still stuck on stupid? Why are you still stuck on that thing that's still holding you back? The God Almighty David, David, he took out, he used what he had. They tried to give him Saul's uh, his breastplate. They tried to give him Saul's uh, all the armor. They tried to give David uh, all the, the, the weaponry that, that would help him defeat Goliath. And he didn't need none of that. All he would was with his, his faith and those five smooth stones. And he wasn't going to need number one of them. He didn't need number one stone but he took five just in case some of Goliath's brothers wanted to step up and get some of this too. Come on, so you know, it's, sometimes you gotta kill. You kill one devil and there's another devil sitting around waiting. You might need those five stones, but just in case somebody wanna try you, you got some stones, some backup. Take to use what he had. Ain't God good? Yeah. David used yeah. something that was unconventional. A sling and five smooth stones. Yeah. Here this man is, got a a, 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 a a spear. I couldn't even tell you how big the spear was. If he threw it at David, if it just grazed David, it would have killed him. Yeah. The weaponry that your giants have are there to intimidate you. They're there to make you cower. But if you think about the God that you serve, All right. God is greater than any giant that you could ever face. Yeah. The songwriter, C.C. Wine, just told you, he never lost a battle. Right. And he never will. Can I get a witness, somebody? He could have said again, he never right. lost a battle. And he never will. Right. So what am I tripping on? Why am I not trusting God? When I'm confronted with situations, oh, we 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 quick to get somebody straight. Tell somebody, let me give you a piece of my mind. We quick to do that, but we can't deal with these giants in our lives. I'm almost done. The Bible says, and, and so David he, he prevailed against his giant, one that was least likely to succeed. A little bitty lad. When you looked at him, the odds were stacked up against him. 
he, he, he wasn't supposed to win. But what David did, he took the first step toward Goliath. Amen. And here comes Goliath running down the knee. Yeah. David already told him what he was going to do to him. Yeah. And, 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 here, and here it is, but David didn't let his fear stop him. Yeah. David took the first step trusting God because he knew God was with him. Yeah. If God made a promise to you, He's not the type of God that he can lie, nor is he the God that he will repent. Amen. If he said, I will be with you until the end of the world, yeah. no matter what you're going through, you can rest at night, you can lay down and go to sleep saying, I know that God said he's with me. Amen. And he is with you. Amen. Come what may. I should have had two or three more amens than that, but I know I'm talking, I'm talking about God. Amen. So they pre prevail against the, and this is the thing, you can't just knock your enemy out, your giant. Amen. You got to kill it. Amen. You got to turn, and killing it means to repent, Amen. to turn from your sins, mm -hmm. and not to go back. Right. Come on somebody, I know we made mistakes, and we, we seem to keep falling in the same trap, and, and God is a forgiving God. Yeah. But whatever your giant is, got to stop playing with it. Amen. You got to kill it. Amen. You can't let it just linger around in your house. You got a, you got a, you got a giant of, of disrespect in your house. Yes. You got to kill it. Amen. I ain't talking about killing your kids. Don't say it. You know, Pastor Richard said, I need to kill that disrespect. Don't go home and kill your kids. Please don't. There's another way to handle with that, but you can stand on the word of God. You can stand on God's word and the word will defeat it. You don't have to kill your children. So David slew. He took Goliath's own sword. He took his own sword and cut his head off. And then he took his head and he raised it up so, so the children of Israel could see Good God Almighty, and he took his head and held it up high so the children could see the victory. Yeah, yeah. Ain't God all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't God all right? Yeah. I don't know about you, but that's the kind of God I want in my life. Yes, yeah. When I get ready to go in battle, yeah. I want to know that God is with me. Yeah, man. I'll hear you. Yeah. God Stood with David down in the valley. Good God Almighty. The same God is standing with you when you confront your giants. Good God Almighty. That same God will equip you and equip you with courage. Good God Almighty. That same God, Lord have mercy. I feel my helper coming in the room right now. Oh, yes. Jesus is the God that I'm talking about. He represents the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Jesus. One Friday, he conquered his giants. The God Almighty. What was Jesus' giant? The God Almighty. He had to take sin, and his blood had to be shed. For the remission of sin. Yeah. Good God Almighty. Yeah. One Friday. Jesus. Yeah. He took a rugged cross. Yeah. And went up a hill called Calvary. Yeah. Good God Almighty. Yeah. When it looked like all was lost. Everybody in the crowd was looking around. And they seen Jesus hanging on the cross. Yeah. And they thought the war and the battle had been lost. Yeah. But early. Good God Almighty. Does anybody know about early? Early Sunday morning. He got up with all power. Victory. Good God Almighty was in his hands. Does anybody know about this Jesus I'm talking about? Good God Almighty. He's my battle axe. Good God Almighty. He's a strong tower. Someplace I can run. 
watch him flee. Yeah! Anybody know what I'm talking about? Somebody say, yeah! Raise your hand! If you know what I'm talking about. Jesus. Conquering and slaying your giants. God has gave us a victory. We don't know it. But the battle has already been fought and the victory has already been won. We just walk around in it until the day that God calls us home. I pray and I hope that something was said today that will encourage you to stand up against your giants. These interpersonal giants. These personal giants that Nobody can see, but you know about it. I don't see your scars, and I know we all got scars. We've been hurt coming up through this life. People have talked about us. People have lied on us. Our souls, and, and, and a lot of times it comes from loved ones, those that are closest to you. But God, he described Satan. He said, Satan, was a toothless liar going about seeking whom he could kill and destroy and devour. Amen. But we are the children of Christ. Amen. And because we are in Christ and Christ is in us, we have the victory. The doors of the church are open. And I'm not really opening the doors of the church, but there may be one here that don't know Jesus in the part of the sin. 